Okay, today we're going to have a lecture with some demonstration too. I'm actually going to be moving between the two rooms. I'm going to start in here and go through talking about chord families and their modes. This is a very frequent question I get. I've been doing a series on my YouTube channel from YouTube or watch me on YouTube. You'll know that I've been going through a series of videos on all the modes of the major scale, the melodic minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, and then auxiliary scales like the whole tone scale, tonic diminished, dominant diminished, augmented scale, so on and so forth. But today's lecture, I wanna talk about the differences between modes. I touch upon it during each video, but this is really going to get down to uh, real specifics on what gives a mode its sound and how do you use them in improvising and in composing. You always think of things, uh, scales and modes, and I use the term mode and scale interchangeably. A mode is a subset of a scale. If you take a C major scale from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then you start on D and use those same notes, that's D Dorian. If you start on E, it's E Phrygian. If you start on F, it's F Lydian. That's how modes work. They are a subset of a scale. Now the parent mode in, for the major scale is called the Ionian mode. I'm gonna start out this lecture today by talking about what are the major type modes. We're gonna go through major type, minor type, dominant type, and half diminished type modes, okay? I wanna look at the differences between them. And we're always gonna reference the major scale and its numbering. So the intervals that are in a major scale, we're gonna talk about what do you do to a major scale to get any of these modes? This is typically how it's talked about. The major scale is kind of the bar at which all scales are measured or all scales are analyzed, let's say. Okay, so we have the Ionian mode here to start. And like I said, we're gonna call it one through seven. If we're in C major, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And we know that between E and F is a half step and between uh, B and C, which would be number eight or number one again, is a half step. That's where the half steps fall. So the second mode on here is the Lydian mode. So just to show you, there is only one note that is different between Lydian and, and Ionian. Now this may be rudimentary to some of you, but some of you may not know that. And that is the, the sharp four, meaning the fourth scale degree, in this case, C, D, E, F would become F sharp. So F sharp is added to that C major scale to make it a Lydian scale. The fourth is raised and it would become a C Lydian scale. Now, all these notes with, with the C major scale with an added, added F sharp to it is really from the key of G, okay? So C Lydian is the fourth mode in the key of G. Okay, that's, not, that's confusing, but that's actually not important right now because I want to focus on a few things. What makes a chord a major type chord? That's the first thing that I want to define. You have to have a one, we have the root, right? And we have the third and we have a fifth. Now we can have or not have a seventh, okay? But typically major type chords have major sevenths in them, meaning that I'm talking if you expand a chord beyond the triad and you go to a seventh chord, all these major type chords, you see the seven there? That's because they all have sevens in them. They don't have flatted sevens. If they had flatted sevens, they would be in the dominant category. All of these modes share one, three, some type of five and a seven, except for the major pentatonic, which is a five note scale, which uses the one, two, three, five, and six of the major scale. So very simply put, this is what you do to a major scale to get these scales. Now we have next Lydian augmented, which is a mode from the melodic minor scale. It's the third mode. Okay, so just like it says, it says Lydian, so it has a sharp four. That's what Lydian means, essentially. Lydian implies something has a raised fourth, okay? And if we're talking about C, we'd have an F sharp here instead of an F, and we'd have a G sharp instead of a G because it has a raised fifth. That's what augmented. Augmented means raised fifth or sharp fifth. An augmented chord is one, three, sharp five. But the sharp five is still a type of major chord. We're gonna still hold it in that category. So they call this a Lydian augmented chord. Could also be called, if I take one, three, sharp five, seven, a major seven sharp five chord. That's the other name for it. And, but using Lydian augmented and major seven sharp five is interchangeable. 
Then next we have Ionian augmented. This is a scale that most people don't know about because it's part of the harmonic minor scale. And its feature is that it has a natural fourth, like a major scale, but it has a sharp fifth, which is where this augmented second interval happens that really gives a uh, harmonic minor scale its sound. Now, just because it's from the harmonic minor scale doesn't mean it needs to sound like it's from the harmonic minor scale and you're Ingve Malmsteen playing on it or something or just something, you know, that is your typical thing you would hear. I did a video called the Lydian Sharp 9 mode. Okay, that's, that's another mode of the harmonic minor scale. And I encourage you to go watch that because uh, not only do I explain the mode, but I also do a little composition based only in the scale. And on these modal... Uh, videos that I've made, all my compositions are based only on the notes in the mode. There are no extra modes. When I do this, the video on Ionian Augmented, I will only use these. If it were in the key of C, it'd be C, D, E, F, G sharp, A, B. And I will, will only use those notes if I do it in the key of C, which I probably won't. Um, anyway, so Ionian Augmented is another scale choice that you can use to play on a major chord or that is a major chord uh, that you could use as a tonic chord. But if you look at it, one, three, sharp five, major seven, it appears, if you spell it just in thirds, it's the same as Lydian Augmented, okay? Because we're not in, in, the, in building a chord in thirds, root, third, fifth, seventh, we're not incorporating the fourth. That's an upper extension. That doesn't come in until the next octave. So, But there is a difference, obviously, between those scales. The next scale I have here is the major pentatonic. Most of you know what that is. I said it before. It's one, two, three, five, and six of a major scale. Okay. Then we have a major blues scale. A major blues scale is like what you hear the Allman Brothers play, or you hear on country blues, you know, uh, that is a... It's not the minor blues scale, which would be something different. I don't have the minor blues scale on here, even though you can use the minor blues scale over a major chord, and it sounds great. It's called blues. But the major blues scale is more of like a countrified blues scale. And you'll hear people mix it. You'll hear Wes Montgomery, Pat Metheny, you know, plenty of people. John Coltrane will use the major blues scale. You'll, you'll hear, uh, you know, Jerry Garcia w w used to use it. Tons of people. Use the major blues scale. It's one, two, flat three, three, five, and six. This is where you get that bluesy sound is between the second and the third, having that half step there. And the last chord I have on here that's part of the major chord family is the augmented scale. Okay, it's not the augmented mode, it's the augmented scale. One, sharp two, or flat third, but sharp two, three, five. So we have one, three, five. And we have major seven, but we also have a sharp five. And I did a very cool video on the augmented scale also, where I did a composition that's on my YouTube page. And I encourage you to go check that one out as well. All of these scales have slightly different sounds and they are all flavors that can be used in improvisation or in composition as tonic chords, as passing chords, uh, but this is your palette that you're, draw that you're drawing from that are related to major chords or major seventh chords. The next thing we're going to talk about are minor scales. Now, I'll take these off here. Minor scales are tricky because there's a lot more of them. So I probably need to write a lot smaller. The first one I'm going to put down is going to be the Dorian mode. The Dorian mode now is one, two flat three, okay? To be a minor uh, scale, you have to have a flat third. Four, five, six, flat seven. The Dorian mode is not the natural minor scale. The natural minor scale is called Aeolian, but the Dorian mode is the most harmonious scale, I believe, over a, uh, over a minor chord. And it's, you frequently hear it in jazz, because there's a lot of two chords. You play a Dorian, it's the second mode of the major scale, and you play it over the two chord. When I say the two chord, that means the minor two chord. So in the key of C, you'd play it over D minor or D minor seven. The next mode I'll, I'll talk about here is Aeolian. All of these have their own flavors. 
One, two, flat three, four, five. Here's the tricky part. Flat six, flat seven. Okay? Now, as you can see, the difference between Aeolian and Dorian is that Aeolian has a flatted sixth, which naturally, because of having this half step there, creates this, um, gives it its melancholy feel. This sixth is a half step away from the seventh here, okay? And that leads you to that flat seven, okay? That would be a B flat in the key of C. So if I do C Dorian, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. Here we have C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, right? Half step, B flat. You don't have as strong of a pull. You have a stronger pull down to the fifth because of the half step than you do from here, the sixth to the seventh, which is really where that flavor comes in, okay? The next scale would be Phrygian. These are all modes of the major scale so far. One, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, okay? So Phrygian, kind of like Aeolian, except for this has a flat two. And that flat two wants to pull down to the one. This is what gives you that Spanish flavor as some people have commented. And I have a Phrygian mode. I actually have episodes for all of these modes. So you can really hear them and you can hear the difference between them. So Phrygian, as you can see, we're adding an extra accidental each time, okay? Then the next one I'm gonna do will be melodic minor, one, two, flat three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I decided to group these three scales together because these are the three minor scales that, are, that come from the major scale, those three notes. The one built on the second scale degree, the sixth scale degree, and the third scale degree. Melodic minor, while it has less accidentals, than some of these other ones, right? If you look at it, compared to a major scale, it only has one accidental, except for the fact that it has a major seventh, okay? This is what gives it its characteristic flavor. It's simply, you could say a melodic minor scale is a major scale with a flat third, okay? Uh, but it has a very different feel to it because of the, because you have this fifth to sixth, so if we're in C, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B. So right here we have F, G, A, B, which is the beginnings of a whole tone scale. Okay, that's a tetrachord there for those four notes. This is the beginning of a whole tone scale. So th those are four whole steps in a row, which gives it a more ambiguous quality because of the lack of a half step like there is here between five and six or between six and seven there's a definite ambiguity to the top part of the scale, which gives the melodic minor in its modes its beautiful flavor, okay? The next one I'm gonna talk about is the harmonic minor. The harmonic minor is one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, major seven. Okay, so you look at it, you say, well, that's not too different than the melodic minor scale. Except for this right here. Between the flat six and the major seven, you have the augmented second. That's the characteristic sound of the harmonic minor. You've got the half step here that's similar to Aeolian that gives you that pull. So you've got two, you've got a few areas that pull against each other. The sixth pulls to the fifth, the flat third pulls to the second, and the seventh pulls back to the tonic. Okay, so there's three points where you have half steps in the scale that give it its particular flavor. So that augmented second here between these two tones is very, very important. So all these modes are flavors, but what do they all share? One, flat three, five, and some type of seventh. Could be a major or flat seven, but they all share one, flat three, and five. They don't have flatted fifths. That's a different category. That's our half diminished 
category that we'll talk about. The next one, let's say we do the minor pentatonic scale. You don't care if I abbreviate, do you? Minor pentatonic. Many of you know this scale because you've played it plenty of times. There are certain types of pentatonic scales that do not have half steps. So just to clarify, there are two types of pentatonic scales. There's the hematonic type, which contains one or more half steps. And there's the anhematonic, which contains no half steps. That's the kind of pentatonic scales that we're talking about. The minor pentatonic would be the anhematonic scale because it has no half steps. Now the blue scale has a half step in it, but that blue scale is different than a pentatonic scale because a blue scale has six notes. Now, this shares the same notes as Aeolian. It shares the same notes as Dorian. It shares the same notes as Phrygian. If you leave out the two and you leave out the six, you don't have any of those color, colorful uh, sounds to them. And this is a scale that works over a lot of different things, basically because it's omitting any half steps where you can get into trouble and you're improvising, for example. And this is used more, it's not like I do, um, you know, pentatonic lines are more used in a linear function than in, than if you're doing pentatonic chords, because those chords would come out of the same, any of these scales they have the same notes in them. So um, the minor pentatonic scale is related to the minor blues scale, but we'll see how. Minor blues. One, flat three, four, here's the tricky part, sharp four, five, flat seven. That sharp four or flatted fifth, however you want to look at it, it's the same note, is the tritone, and it's your blue note, okay? You can say the third is a blue note too. There's a lot of blue notes in, bl in blues. It all depends on how you play them. The tonic can be a blue note. Uh, but that sharp four is what gives it its characteristic sound. It's also what differentiates it from a minor, pe minor pentatonic. So blues scale is a six note scale. A pentatonic, pent meaning five, is a five note scale. Now there are other modes that are related to the melodic minor scale and to the harmonic minor scale, like Dorian flat two and Dorian sharp four. Now, Dorian flat two is a mode of the melodic minor scale. Dorian sharp four is a mode of the harmonic minor scale. Well, what do you do? How do you compose these? Well, if you know what a Dorian scale is, you write it down. So this is a Dorian flat two scale. Well, What's interesting here is this half step between the root and the second. It's like Phrygian does not have that flat six. And because it has this half step between the six and flat seven, it gives it a very different flavor. So it has half steps in really interesting spots, okay? And if you go watch my Dorian flat two video, you'll hear it. There's some really cool sounds with that. Dorian sharp four, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna write a Dorian scale, two, three, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven. And we're gonna do what it tells you to do. We're gonna sharp the fourth, okay? Once again, it retains its minor feel because we have one, flat three, and five. Every scale that I've gone over so far has one, flat three, five, which is a minor triad. These are your choices, your palette of scales to improvise with, of scales to write melodies out of, of scales to derive chords out of. All of them have triads in them. All of them have seventh chords in them. They have suspended chords, they have Lydian chords, they have Phrygian chords, they have or triads, they have all these different types of things. We'll talk about that. If you go watch my YouTube channel, and for those of you that haven't signed up, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, anyway, so these are your minor chords that go with the minor, that are part of the minor chord family. Next, we're going to talk about dominant chords. Now, dominant chords are ones that go on seventh chords, okay? Dominant seventh chords. That means they are major triads with a flat seven or augmented triads with a flat seven. I'm going to put dominant. Your first obvious one is going to be mixolydian. That's the one, that's the one chord scale that is part of the, the 
modes of the major scale. It's the fifth mode, and it's played over the dominant chord, okay? And it's constructed one, two, three, four. Starts out like a major scale, five, six, just like a major scale, but boom, flat seven. D dominant chords at minimum have a one, three, and a flat seven. The fifth can be a sharp fifth, it could be a flatted fifth. We'll talk about that as we look at the next group of scales. But the important notes here are one, three, and flat seven. If it had a flat three, it could be a sharp nine, but it's gonna have a natural third also, okay? When jazz piano players are voicing or comping, they use these things called shells, and they'll typically play just the third and the seventh of the chord in their left hand, as they start to punctuate their melodies with their right hand in their solos, okay? So those thirds and sevenths are incredibly important because they define the quality of the chord. If a piano player is gonna play a major uh, shell, they'll play the third and the major seventh. The next scale we're gonna talk about is Mixolydian sharp 11. I'm just gonna abbreviate for you guys. You can call it mixed sharp four, you can call it Lydian Dominant, I call it Mixolydian sharp 11. One, two, three. Sharp 11 means sharp four, because the four and 11 are synonymous. You have to know two is the nine, four is the 11, six is the 13, okay? Those are just remnants of flat seven. So this is a Mixolydian scale with a sharp four. Boom, okay? This is a mode of the melodic minor scale. So uh, in the, if you were playing a C mixolydian sharp 11, it would be C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B flat, okay? Um, this has a really particular color in it because once again, you have that sharp four and fifth half step there, and then which you don't have here you have the half step between the third and the fourth. Here you have the half step between the fourth and the fifth. So you have a stronger pull because of that Lydian sound to the fifth. Whereas here, the four wants to pull down to the third. That's why we call it a sus four in chords. If the third is not included in the chord, it'll become a, it can be a dominant seven sus four, which would be one, four, five, flat seven. Whereas a regular straight dominant chord would be one, three, five, flat seven. Does that make sense? Okay, now there's other uh, scale choices for dominant chords. One of them is the dominant diminished scale. Dominant diminished is the half whole diminished scale. Um, this is a scale that you would use on a dominant seven flat nine chord, a dominant seven sharp nine chord, sharp nine, sharp five, but it has a natural fifth in it, as you will see. And this is an octatonic scale, so it has eight notes. It has one, flat two, flat three, let me just get in between, three. Then it has sharp four, five, six, flat seven. It's a little tricky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octatonic, oct means eight. This flat two is really flat nine, okay? This flat three is really a sharp nine. And this sharp four can be a sharp four or it could be a flat five. So if you see a chord that says C13 flat nine, that's coming from the dominant diminished scale because that implies that it has a natural fifth in it, which the alter dominant scale, which we're gonna talk about next, does not have. So the alter dominant scale, altered dominant. Now, the reason it's called altered dominant is because it has all the alterations that you find on a dominant chord. It has the flat nine, the sharp nine, the flat five, and the sharp five. Okay, as you will see, one, and I'm just gonna call them that because this is a flat two, but I'm gonna call it a 
flat nine, sharp nine, third. So it's the same as a diminished so far. The other name for the scale, there's two other names. One is, hold on. One of the names is diminished whole tone. That's the old school name that they used to say back in the 70s, or super locrian. But this is part of a diminished scale. As you can see, it's the same notes. And then we get to the uh, flat five, sharp five. You can also call this a sharp four. I'm calling it a flat five because I want you to see what the difference between these are. And flat seven. This sixth, I'm going to replace with a 13. The sixth and the 13th are the same notes. Okay? So, a, an altered dominant scale does not have a 13th. So if you have a 13th chord and it has a flat 9, it's coming from the dominant diminished scale. It's not coming from the altered dominant scale. The altered dominant scale has a sharp 5, whereas the uh, dominant diminished scale, half step, whole step scale, has a natural 5th. Okay, these are the differences between them. And these are the things that when you play voicings or when you're using them for your compositions that you have to make note of. Very different sounds in them. Very, very different sounds. Uh, and you need to be aware. So if you think about this here, if I were to write this down uh, like this, one, flat two, flat three, flat four, flat five, flat six, flat seven. Oops, seven. This is really, theoretically, how the scale would be categorized. But it's not practical. This is not for practical use, okay? It's not practical, say, a flat four. A flat four is a third. If I'm playing a C7 chord with a sharp nine and a sharp five, and somebody plays an, an E, I'm not going to say, oh, that's an F flat on that chord, right? Well, of course, it's not an F flat. It's an E. So I'm back here. Sorry about that. I like to use real world terms for these uh, for these scales that people so that people can actually learn from them. The next scale that we have would be the whole tone scale, which is one, one, two, three, uh, sharp five, flat seven. The whole tone scale that means there's all whole steps between each note. It's very ambiguous because of that. The sharp four and sharp five. So you will typically, a lot of people will call this a flat five. I like to think of the whole tone scale as having flat five, sharp five. Uh, because it makes you, um, it functions in a different way. If I had an augmented chord that I'm improvising over and I want to have use the whole tone scale uh, I'm going to think of in my head of the flat five and sharp five. This is kind of how people interpret things. But this is a very common scale used in the impressionistic era because there are no half steps in it. It's completely ambiguous sounding. It has no grounding uh, principles other than when you plop down a root. If you look at the notes, let's say we do C, D, E. Let's say we go uh, F sharp. I'm making a sharp four. G sharp for sharp five and B flat. You've got C, E, G sharp, which is an augmented triad right there. Boom, boom, boom. Then you have D, F sharp. Let's call this A sharp here because B flat and A sharp, same name, and harmonic, A sharp. D, F sharp, A sharp is a D augmented triad. So we have two augmented triads in the whole tone scale, a whole step apart. So if you take an augmented triad, and you can go watch my whole tone scale video on YouTube, and I explain this, but if you take a C augmented chord and a D flat augmented chord, and you play them at the same time, that's a whole tone scale. Not quite in the same order that you would have them, but that will give you a whole tone voicing. Okay? These are your your more standard scales for improvisation and for composing over dominant chords. Now, there's a few that we've left out. One of them is Mixolydian flat six, called mix flat six, which is a mode 
It's the fifth mode of the melodic minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, flat six, right? Flat seven. That is Mixolydian flat six. That is a, I want to say, a little known scale of the melodic minor. It's probably the least used. Jazz players don't use it that much. I haven't done a video on it, but I will do a video and I will make a cool sounding um, piece out of it. Another one is Phrygian major. Now this is, Phrygian major is a mode of the harmonic minor scale. It's the five mode of harmonic minor, okay? One, flat two, Phrygian, right? And then you get major. What's major mean? Major means it's got a major third, okay? Now to be Phrygian, if we go four, five, flat six, flat seven. This is a Phrygian major scale, okay? This flat two is really a flat nine. This flat six is really a sharp five, although it acts like a flat six. So if we do C, D flat, E, F, G, A flat, B flat, between the D flat and the E is your augmented second. So let's say that we've got um, harmonic minor. The thing about Phrygian major is that it's a, it can be played over an entire minor 2-5-1 progression. If you don't know what to play, let's say you're playing G minor 7 flat 5 to a C7 flat 9 to an F minor um, progression, F minor 7 or F minor major 7. You can use this scale over the whole thing. And then it would have the notes F, G, A flat, uh, let's see, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E natural. Okay, now, if you got count the, to the fifth mode, one, two, three, four, five, this is the five chord here, starting on C. That's your Phrygian major mode. It's on the fifth chord. So, C Phrygian major comes out of the F harmonic minor scale. It is the fifth mode. So, you have C, which would be one, D flat, which would be two, E, right? We're on a C chord, which would be three, F is four, G is the fifth. A flat is the flat six, and B flat is the flat seven, okay? Um, for those of you that haven't purchased my book, the Beato book, here's a shameless plug. All of this material is in there in the Beato book. Uh, it's a 300 page PDF that I sell. If you want, you can write me, rickbeato1 at gmail.com. I'll, I'll write it at the end of this. Anyways, Phrygian major is a really cool mode because it can get you by soloing over an entire minor two, five, one progression, okay? And the one chord, it gives you the major seven. It'll give you an F minor major seven if, in that key, which is totally cool. This concludes part one of chord families and their scales. In part two, I'm gonna talk about half diminished chords, meaning scales that are played over half diminished or scales that have a one, flat three, flat five, and flat seven scale, along with some of the auxiliary scales that we have not talked about. I'll also be showing you musically how they sound compared to one another, how Dorian sounds compared to Aeolian, how Aeolian sounds compared to Phrygian, and so on and so forth. And I'll go through all the scales and what their sounds are like. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my Everything Music YouTube channel, please subscribe here now and tell your friends about it. Also, once again, the Beato book. Write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com, and I'll tell you how to get it. That's all for now. I'm Rick Beato. Thanks for watching.